I'm not hitting rock on this spot. There's my rock. There he is, got him. Sweet, dude. I was just saying, if I'm not hitting rock, I'm not getting bit on this particular spot. I started feeling rock and immediately, here he comes. Here he comes. Wait till you see what this guy's got in his mouth. Nice big bass. That's what you get. <laughs> That's what you get when you upsize. Ooh, he's got it. He's got it good. You can see I'm not messing around. That bait's not messing around. Giant crankbait on a deep rack, a rock patch into the heat of the summer. Classic pattern. Bluegill, we got bluegill out here in this particular spot. And you got chunks like this. Cool. Thing has a published dive depth of 24 feet. You can get it deeper on lighter line or particularly, you know, making an extremely long cast. I just made a line drive cast into 12 mile an hour wind, but that's where my spot is. So I could either be positioned upwind and cast off the back transom of the boat, but I prefer if I can to be downwind because I like standing right here, staring at my 360 and then picking apart a piece of structure, fan casting it to make sure that, you know, no rock is unturned somewhat literally. Reason these fish are out on these rocky extensions, these humps or point extensions is that their food source moves out here, you know, in the mid late summer, even well into September and October. Bluegill in particular like to shift deeper, crappie, basically just following their preferred water temp. That's what really drives them out of the shallows and then bass follow them. So bass on a grass lake, they, they seem to most of the time prefer to be in weeds. But water temperature and forage will drive them deeper. So forage is more comfortable out deeper on these, on these clean areas and bass will follow them. And the nice thing is these spot, spot on the spots really stand out on side imaging and 2D sonar and down imaging and 360. So even if you have a real simple fish finder with 2D sonar, your return changes, you'll get that nice solid band of red or whatever your color palette is, it'll become a solid color indicating hard bottom. You know, you know, and that's when I like to scan and see is there food here. If you're marking bait fish, chances are bass are gonna be out there using those same spots. Obviously I happen to have the tools, all of the tools available and that's, that's nice, but you by no means need all of that. All you need is a, a crankbait, a decent rod and reel and 2D sonar to fish these spots effectively. So take a look at that guys. I just scooted up on 360 imaging here and you can see we're right on a transition zone between hard and soft. Smack dab on the edge between that brighter color and that darker color. And then I started coming into the bait fish here. And then even at Auto Chart Live, you can notice here I have bottom composition highlighted. So that color there denotes the hardest spot on this structure, which corresponds to what 360 is showing me. So I guess my point is there, once I got into the hard is when I started seeing the bait fish. And really that's the pattern. The decision for me then is choosing a bait that I think gets down to that zone comfortably. And then the fact that we're fishing pretty clear water, I wanna choose a bait that I think does a decent job resembling the forage. And on this lake, it's a bluegill. So this big M does a really nice job here. It's a clear water lake. Doesn't mean I can't catch fish cranking. I can usually come on to these spots and get some of the biggest fish, but I'll catch small ones too. But that bait does a nice job resembling that. Nice one. Here he comes. What do we got here? <laughs> this guy went for the steak, huh? Just proof that as big as that crankbait looks and as intimidating as it feels when you grab that, it's definitely not too big. You know, catches pound and a half bass. Big crankbait. Look at that. It's a big meal, but I mean, it fits nicely into the mouth. Here you go, buddy. I like your attitude. I have two mapping sources up. I'm gonna go ahead and call 360 a map. It happens to be my real-time map, and it's showing me what's happening 360 around the boat in terms of bottom composition and sometimes even fish. But you see right here, 
at my 11 o'clock, 330 degrees, and then extending out to about my 230 at 60 degrees is a rough patch. And if I go ahead and take a look down here at my auto chart live, I'm just gonna make this bigger. I've custom mapped this spot because this lake isn't charted from Lake Master in high definition, so I did it myself. I can clearly see these tight contours. There's the, this all weeds up on top here, and then it extends out. In blue represents the rock. I have bottom composition selected within my 360 or within my hummingbird menu for the chart. So I'm staying well off of this spot and I'm bombing really long casts out here beyond. I'm bombing long casts out beyond the blue and I'm cranking that bait down quickly so that it's hitting across all of this. And then my strategy typically is to work the whole thing. So I'll fan cast starting down here and I'll just start working the bait across. Now after I do that, I've kind of fished the spot. If I didn't get bit, there's either not fish there or they didn't want a crankbait. And today I've just been moving on because I've, I've committed myself to the crankbait bite. But so far it's been producing. That's basically it. That corresponds with that. I use this zero degrees being straight off the bow and just like a clock to line up my casts. Right now, if I make a 12 o'clock cast, I know that I'm working that bait through rock and that's pretty key for this crankbait bite. And the other big part of this is being able to spot lock on the spot. I'm taking boat control out of the equation and with a nice prevailing wind like this, I hit spot lock. I have a little bit of current flow coming down along the edge of the boat and it really keels that boat and locks that boat in position. So I'm not getting lateral movement on the boat. Once I get position on spot lock, the boat's locked in place. Now I'm gonna strategically pick apart that rock or that hard bottom area with methodical casts. I'm not casting blind. I'm gonna make sure I bring that bait across that whole area within the strike window of a fish. And that might be the case where they're set up on a very specific, uh, specific spot. Then I found the crankbait lineup. And once I stop getting bit on that, then maybe I'll grab a finesse presentation to see if I can't get a few more. But that's the system. It's a really fun way to pattern fish. It's a fun way to land on concentrations of fish at the right time of the year particularly summer on into the fall months when panfish start to shift out of those real shallow weeds and set up on these spots. Reel and fast, reel and fast. I stick this rod tip right in the water. This is a long rod, eight foot Megabass Orochi double X launcher designed for launching big crankbaits and that's exactly what it does. But it's also a real sensitive rod because I want that bottom composition transmitted up the line up the rod to my hand so I know what type of bottom that crankbait's going over. There's, ooh, what do I got there? Yep, that's him, that's him. End of a long cast. Oh, here he comes, here he comes. <laughs> awesome, dude, nice one. I mean, you can see we're downwind and I'm just launching into, into the driving wind so I can get a perfect lineup using 360. And that guy came on the end of a really long cast Nice fish. I'm not gonna be lipping him. Oop, he's gonna come off. Ooh. Uh huh? Solid fish there. Mm. Yeah, sweet. The lineup's just been really key. Using three, 360, looking a long ways out off into the distance, just lining up the bow of the boat at 12 o'clock and launching that bait driving my rod tip down into the water to get that crankbait down quickly and you got these guys waiting for you. Nice chunk. Let's get her back. For reels on these big crankbaits like this, these big deep divers, it doesn't hurt to step up into a 150 or even a 200 size reel. Gives you more line capacity. So I'm fishing a bigger diameter, 15 pound Seaguar Tatsu, whereas you're oftentimes fishing 10 or 12 pound fluorocarbon with this big bait. I want the additional horsepower. Along with that comes a bigger diameter to that line. So I want a bigger spool that's gonna help me with casting distance. And it's also gonna help me with my line pickup at distance. I'm not depleting that spool completely. I still got a lot of line on there and a pretty good diameter. And then just bigger gearing overall makes it easier to retrieve a bigger bait like that. You know, your standard flipping and pitching reel that you might use for a bigger braid, 150 size reels, perfect. This is a Daiwa Tatula good value for the money. And I might, if I'm gonna be done with my crankbait bite for the year, I'm gonna go throw 
30 to 50 pound braid on it. You can use it for a lot of different things, even to include frogging, but it works real good for launching these baits for line pickup and for the horsepower to handle big fish. This crankbait, the Big M 7.5, is designed to run about 24 feet. That's its published running depth. And I think it'll go deeper on an on a extremely long cast and if you lighten up your line. But I'm fishing this on 15 pound here today. And I've been anywhere from 20 to, right now I'm sitting in 13 feet of water. But that doesn't bother me at all. I wanna over crank these spots. To me, I wanna get down really fast and I wanna stay there. That allows me to slow my retrieve speed and keep that bait down there. And it gives you a real pronounced action with that bait across the bottom, rather than just fighting to get the bait deep. I mean, look at that fish right there. I want confidence. My bait is where these fish are. I'm pointing with my, my big toe there. But that's where he's at. So today, this extreme deep diver gets down there really quick and it stays there. You know, if you're fishing a good clean bottom where you're not gonna be fighting grass too much, don't be scared to select a crankbait that's designed to actually run several feet deeper than the depth you're actually in. And you get a pretty cool action on that bait deflecting across the bottom as it's just fighting to get deeper and deeper.